Yes. Okay. We're going to keep moving. Effect, so gross operating income minus expenses equals the net operating income. Very important you know that because the third method that we're going to talk about is the income method, which deals with the uh, value based upon the income that it uses. All right. The first method I want to talk about is this method called a cap rate. A cap, which is short for the word capitalization, is a return on your investment. If you had $100,000 and you walked into a bank today and said, hey, I want to deposit this $100,000, how much is the savings earning? And they say, oh, our savings account earns 1%. That 1% is called a cap rate. It is the ratio of the money earned to the value of the property, all right? So the cap rate is the NOI divided by the value. And in this example, I'm telling you the cap rate is 8%. So if you had $100,000 and you were getting 8%, you would earn or your net income would be eight grand. Now there is a algebraic question here. So let's do this. Erase this a little bit, go back. So cap rate equals the NOI over the value. There are three equations that can be derived from this, and you can expect a question of one of those three in nature. Does everybody see that I can algebraically move this stuff around and say that the value is equal to the NOI over the cap rate? And the cap rate times the value equals the NOI. These are the same three equations, only written in a different form. Here we're looking for the cap rate, here we're looking for the value, here we're looking for the NOI. Does everybody see those algebraically? Know how to move them around? Yes, ma'am. Could ma you put the paper again uh, so I could see the third one? What's it says? Is it cap, cap rate times the value? Okay. So what you have is the cap rate equals the NOI over the value. You also can flip those here. The value equals the NOI over the cap rate. And the third one would be the cap rate times the value equals the NOI. And if you don't know how to do this algebraically, I had a guy show me this, how he remembered it. And if you want to remember it this way, here's an easy way, watch this. Four is 12 divided by three. You can flip the three and four. Three is 12 divided by four. And then obviously the third equation is three times four equals 12. So you see the same analogy in the cap rate and the NOI as you do here. So 
he said, oh, I always remember that to help me remember these three. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can go back. Yeah. So here's the question that I'm asking you. Seems to be a circle on the screen for some reason. So the question I'm asking you is, if this strip center has five units and each is paying $500 per month, the total annual expenses are $10,000 and the appraiser knows the cap rate is 8%, remember, you will, don't know how to figure this, so it will be given to you. I'm asking you, what is the value of this property? So, go. What is the value of this property? The first thing you would need to understand is with cap rates, I have to use the NOI. All right. Do you so how do I get to the net operating income? That is the gross income minus the expenses. So what's the gross income? Five units times $500 per month times 12 months, remember, is, if I've done my math right, $30,000. That is the gross operating income. But I need the net. How do I get to the net operating income? I subtract the expenses that I told you were $10,000 on an annual basis. So you end up with $20,000 in net operating income. I don't know how I got 20 like that. Uh. Now, value is net divided by cap. So you take $20,000, divide that by 8%, which is what? 0 0.08. And that gives you, I guess I need to do the math. 250,000, is that right? That's what I got. I love algebra. So the value is equal to 250,000. Exactly, that's how the appraiser, notice how that math's fair, actually fairly simple. I can do algebra. It's getting all those numbers that typically have to be the hard part for the appraiser. They have to ask for the tax returns. They have to know what that 8% market is, which you won't need to know on the exam. It's literally what our math professor used to call a plug and chug. The key is annual basis. You need the gross rent. You subtract the expenses because the key portion is cap rates work on NOI. Cap rates work on NOI. Are we good? Do we need to know another one? So that is one way. Typically, cap rates are used for strip centers and office buildings. Strip centers and office buildings. Okay. If you are going to use residential properties, and I mean big numbers, not like a, a single family home rental or a duplex typically, 
I'm talking multiple units. There are as a second way to do this. Uh, where are we at? That is called the gross income method. And the gross income method, there are two of them. There is this thing called a gross rent multiplier, which only uses rental income. Now, this is probably the most hotly contested section, even amongst appraisals. So I'm going to tell you the method on how we use this in Indiana. The gross rent multiplier literally is a number like 15. Now, I cannot define what 15 means to you. All I can tell you is 25 is a bigger value than 15. I don't know what 25 means compared to 15. I don't know if 25 means it's got a golf course and 15 doesn't or 16 or 106. All I can tell you is obviously 15 is less than 25. So 25 would be a better number. I don't know what they mean. So don't worry about that. But it literally is as easy as I just told you. That property a minute ago had $30,000 gross income. Now the key to this is that it is gross income before remember we used net income now we are using gross income and you would literally take it times the multiplier 30,000 times 15 the value of this property is $450,000 it's literally that simple. Once again, you will not be asked to derive the gross rent multiplier or the GRM. It will be given to you. And the key is it's gross where the cap rate used NOI. Any questions? Thumbs up. Now there is a second one and here's where the can contestation comes from. There's this thing called a gross income multiplier. Because remember, some properties generate other income besides just rent. On the gross rental multiplier, you only multiply the rental income. On the gross income multiplier, it would take into account other sources of income, like the laundry machines that, or the Coke machine, and we rented out the clubhouse and we sold pool passes. So, in this example, if we set a gross income multiplier of 15, but now we have to look at all of the income. So 30,000 was the rent, but we made five grand in pool passes and we made two grand in Coke machine. Our total income is 37,000. Now you take 37 times 15 and what do you get? Another 90 grand onto that? 540,000 is the value. I hope I did that math right. Seven times 15 is 95 grand. 555, isn't it? Did I do something wrong? Uh, no, you're probably right. Times the 15. Seven times 15 is 105. 105 into 450, it'd be right. 555. Is that what you got, Shauna? Yes. 
So see how the added income adds value. Now, I'm not even going to explain the other way that some people do. And trust me, if you Google gross rent multiplier versus gross income multiplier, you are going to see people do it two different ways. And there is an argument between these two. I'm telling you for our tests, the income, gross income, takes into consideration all of the income on an annual basis. Gross rent multiplier takes in all of the rental only income on an annual basis. All right. So what you now have is a cap rate, which uses NOI. You have a gross rental multiplier and a gross income multiplier. Gross rent multiplier, sorry. These are typically used for residential apartments. Apartments. <laughs> residential apartments. All right. This is the income method. So what you now have seen is we technically have three different ways to do this property, or this is through the rental method, or the gross rent method, and we have the sales comparison approach and a cost approach. 